Hello and welcome to Rhabdomyolysis. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy, and I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Let's talk a little bit about rhabdomyolysis. What happens in this situation is that a patient for one reason or another has muscle breakdown and the byproducts of that muscle breakdown can end up getting stuck in the kidney and causing the patient to have renal dysfunction. So some of the causes of rhabdomyolysis include excessive exercise. Now I'm not talking about the fact that, well, you know, we got up and we ran around the block. I'm talking about those people who maybe haven't prepared for it and they go out and they run a marathon or, uh, you know, in cases at boot camp and things like that where people have really excessive exercise. Maybe it's the first week on the job for a construction worker who's never done construction before and they're doing lots of lifting and so on that they've never done in the past. So that's the kind of thing we're talking about with excessive exercise. There may be other situations too. Maybe it's a crisis situation where the person is exercising uh, moving or cleaning up or something like that in, in a way that they've never done before. Seizures can also cause, because of causing all of this muscle stress and tension during the seizure, they can cause the muscle to break down. DTs, for the same reason, muscle ischemia, trauma, crush injuries. Okay, so this is a big place that we see a lot of rhabdo, is in our patients who have crush injuries, because we're literally crushing the muscle, which is then going to release that myoglobin into the bloodstream, and then we'll get to the kidneys in here in just a moment. DKA, drugs, there's, so there's some medications that can help to cause rhabdomyolysis. Now, if you're taking a look at this and say, wow, geez, I take a statin. I can't believe that this could cause rhabdomyolysis. Well, yes, it can predispose to that, but it's a rare side effect. And usually in combination with one of these other pieces where it's caused. One of the symptoms that we commonly associate with rhabdomyolysis is this dark reddish brown urine. In addition, you may see protein in the urine. Protein would be demonstrated in the urine by having some foam kind of on the top of that sample. So here's a sample over here on the right and it's showing that dark reddish brown urine. So urine is not supposed to be that color, obviously. And this would be an indication that we could have rhabdomyolysis. We, the patient may also complain of muscle pain and weakness, obviously, if they're alert. So if this is your trauma patient who has muscle pain and weakness, you're probably not going to know that. Fever, tachycardia, hypotension, and possibly metabolic acidosis. Diagnostically, the big test that we're looking for here is the CPK. We're looking to see that the patient has an elevated CPK, and that will help us to determine how much rhabdomyolysis is possible, how much myoglobin is in the bloodstream. So CPK, remember, there's three different types of CPK. CPK MB, that's the one we look for when we're looking for heart problems. CPK BB, which is coming from the brain, and CPK MM, which comes from the muscle. Now, we don't have to do the isoenzymes to be able to see an elevation here. We just see this sky-high CPK number in our patient who has this muscular injury. We can also see an elevation in myoglobin, but CPK is usually our uh, critical uh, criteria that we use for diagnosis. Your analysis, Again, we expect to see that reddish-brown urine, and we may also see that there's myoglobin and blood in the urine. Blood gases, we may be able to identify a metabolic acidosis. Okay, so now this is an example here of somebody who is exercising. Now, just because she had some muscle pain when she exercised does not mean she's going to get <laughs> rhabdomyolysis. Our treatment then obviously is prevention. Yeah, so if we can prevent it by uh, avoiding those medications or identifying early that we might have an elevation in CPK and eliminating the medications, etc. But, you know, a lot of these things are the result of situations that occur, trauma or excessive exercise. It may not be a situation where the person knows ahead of time that they're going to have to do this kind of excessive exercise. Uh, obviously, the person who just decides one day that, hey, I'm tired of sitting on a couch, I'm going to go out and run a marathon, uh, that's not a very wise decision. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we could prevent that by educating them that they need to train a little bit for that. 
Early detection, so we are identifying that there's changes in the color of the urine. That's usually going to be one of our first signs or muscle pain and or muscle pain. IV fluids are going to be part of our treatment, a big part. And we're going to be giving these fluids, depending upon the CPK level, maybe two liters up to six liters. And so we want to try and wash this myoglobin through the glomerulus. So that's what it's showing over here on the right-hand side. We're showing a nephron. So this is our functional unit of the kidney. And uh, we want to be flushing lots of fluid through there so that we can't have this myoglobin clogging up the filter. That's basically what it does. This myoglobin just clogs up the filter, causes acute renal dysfunction or acute kidney failure, and then uh, we have some additional problems. Monitor the renal functions, our renal function test, and watch that urine output. If the urine output starts going down, we start getting into an oligeric type of state, we'll want to make sure that we're running some B1 and creatinine here to find out what's going on with our renal function. Some predictors of acute kidney injury in a patient who has rhabdomyolysis, and the picture over on the right here is showing, it's, it's an illustration to try to show what's happening here. So you see kind of that blow up area that's coming out uh, kind of in the middle of the screen and down toward uh, the second half there. And it's showing how these little green things are clogging up the filter. And that's what happens with rhabdomyolysis is all this myoglobin is just aggregating there. It's just collecting and it's clogging up the filter. So predictors of acute kidney injury include a CK greater than 6,000, dehydration, so if we're seeing that there's an increase in the hematocrit, increase in the serum sodium, so those would be, you know, big pieces. And again, you're thinking about that person going out and running a marathon, and dehydration would be a big piece of that too, right? So they've got the dehydration, they've got the high CK level, boom. Now, again, I'm not talking about people who train for this. People who train for this are not going to be breaking down their muscles like somebody who's never trained and goes out and runs a marathon. Sepsis, hyperkalemia, and hypoalbuminemia. So these are our predictors, the things we want to be looking for that would be an indication that this patient could be at super risk here for having acute kidney injury as a result of rhabdomyolysis. Well, thank you for joining me for rhabdomyolysis. Until next time, bye now.